This review is of Katsuhiro Otomo's Domu, A Child's Dream. Uh, Katsuhiro Otomo was the creator of Akira, which is, you know, over 2,000 page graphic novel, manga, and uh, very, very famous film of the same name, Akira. And this work was right before he started Akira. And it was r equally famous. Like it really uh, put him on the, on the map as a manga artist in a huge way in Japan. And it won the Grand Prix uh, International Science Fiction Grand Prix Award and what was it's like the Nebula Award like in the US however the Nebula Award like is given in different categories like sci-fi like I don't know young adult or whatever and but this sci-fi Grand Prix award like the Nebula Award is given only to fiction typically but this Domo was so so considered so great as science fiction and then I guess that year there was no you know prose written equally as as good that they gave this prize um, to Otomo for this work so uh, here it is I got like it's a this I have a, a rare first edition I forget what the print run is for these dark horse translations of the trade paperback but um, the original print run in Japan was 500,000 copies and it sold out over the years and they've never reprinted it so this is very rare and on eBay <laughs> this is quite expensive like over a hundred dollars in most cases uh, especially for uh, of, of first edition. So uh, I splurged and you know went ahead and, and got this version so we could flip through it. It has a nice introduction which gives a lot of background about some of the short stories that he worked on before. This uh, graphic novel not only is the story great but his artistic technique and the, and the subject matter is uh, is really great because there's like an, a, a higher level of thought and detail and realism to all this uh, art and this is a typical I remember reading about Akira or in other interviews with him that when he was a kid he went to a lot of films and one of the films that like made a huge impression on him was West Side Story and if anybody's seen West Side Story, it opens with like a very, very wide shot of the city and then it goes into the neighborhood and then you have like this playground and this is what this opens with too. Uh, Akira opens similarly with wide shots. So um, s that's one of the elements that you'll see throughout this uh, film. Uh, sorry, <laughs> film, it's funny. I say that because um, uh, before this he actually even made a short film uh, and it, it, it does read like a film. It's very, very cinematic. So here uh, a guy jumps off a building. Uh, so basically there's like, there's been over 25 incidents in this block of uh, buildings like there it's like a kind of a project with uh, mis mixed incomes and among these uh, buildings 25 in dif different incidents uh, some were written off as suicides some were like um, uh, written off as murders and then, so they're investigating and then uh, you know they're looking at all kinds of uh, suspects and then they see this old man but then, you know, the detectives are like, well, this guy, you know, <laughs> forget him. He's, he's nobody. Um, he actually is somebody. Uh, he's, he's the one that's doing everything. And we find out that very early. 
So the investigation goes on, a, a new guy gets assigned to it. Um, beautiful, you know, like just nice little shots, quiet sh shots, I mean, you know, establishing shots. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's a sheer master work. And he really like um, absorbed all the films he watched, like the best cinema in the, the uh, mostly 50s and 60s, I suppose, that came to Japan. So, and then, you know, there's a, a lot of different characters. Uh, there's a couple of detectives, the young guy and the older guy. And then, like, there's this guy who's, like, a drunk, and he comes back later. Um, uh, he has a criminal past, so, like, the detectives suspect him, or, you know, they, they, they keep him um, on his radar. Uh, and then this lady here is uh, recounting having seen the guy that jumped right before, and she thought it was odd that he had this weird hat with wings on, but that hat doesn't show up. It doesn't show up um, as evidence. And then, and then she, I think she says, like, the kid had it, or... Yeah, he was, he, she's saying he was wearing it. Oh, there was something here like with, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a scene, oh, yeah, here it is. You know, so the cop is being mean to the children because the children are like, hey, can I play with your gun? Can I see your gun? He's like, no, <laughs> get away from me. And then, so the old man witnesses that. And... Um, you know, these two cops are on patrol. Uh, the security guards are on patrol. And the, the guy that was mean to the kids, I mean, he wasn't really mean. He was just saying, don't, don't play with the gun. Um, he, uh, he goes for a leak. Actually, his partner goes for a leak. And, um, and then he comes back and the guy's missing. And then he ends up jumping off the building. And the gun goes missing, and then that's going to come back. So it's like so many layers. Such a wonderfully thought out script. And this is the detective here. Well, he makes a call into the office. And uh, he's being haunted by a voice. Uh, the old man is talking to him. The old psychic man. And um, he chases the voice all the way to the roof. And I love, like, it's so good. He gets up the steps and boom, the open door. And as an investigator, one of the things they find out is like that door has never been unopened. And, you know, it's like the key is, is uh, rusty. The, the keyhole is rusty. And the janitor or the superintendent never used it. And then here he is brought up to the roof and the doors open, you know? And there's like, uh, oh, there he is, and there's the man. So we see him really early, and I love this reveal, you know, because it's like, like he doesn't, you know, Tomo doesn't build out the story like, oh, it's, you know, suspense, like, who is it, you know, like, he, he reveals this guy at the beginning and then he makes the actual hero uh, a little girl, which we'll see. So this old man is like super, super evil. And there's this like uh, baby playing on the balcony. Or actually he's playing, I think, inside. And then he's on the balcony. The old man pulls him on the balcony, puts, pulls him to the edge. These movers notice and the little girl who I guess has some, uh, some powers herself. Um, you know, I love, you know, little shots like this. It's, this is what I'm talking about, cinematic. You know, it's like they drop the flowers, you know? And then so he pulls the baby. He says something like, uh, the quote is, a ripe tomato. Like he thinks, 
pull the baby o over and, and it'll splash like a ripe tomato. And uh, he, he comes and the girl stops the baby from, f from falling. She makes the baby hover and uh, confronts the old man. What, she's like, what do you mean, ripe tomato? You know, you could have killed that baby. You know, she's like, like reprimanding him. And it is so amazing. And it, this is a recurrent theme in uh, Otomo's work. He really seems to prize children. He, he thinks like, like that children are kind of magical and super intelligent and, and capable of a lot more uh, often than adults. But then adults in, in his world are there to like rein in the children in a way. But uh, children are limitless. I think that's like safe to say that it, it's his philosophy. And um, turns out like this old man is kind of like a child, like very similar to like in Akira where there's these kind of like old looking children. Uh, he's kind of like that and he's just like, like an evil old child that uh, has this power but chooses to use it for evil. And this girl, you know, he tries to throw a pebble at her to test her, and she just turns and like stops it and flings it back. And uh, so he's like, he's like sweating. He's like, oh, like she's gonna spoil all my fun, you know? So this is like a new detective that gets assigned. In, in a way, he kind of looks like the old man, but he's not as wrinkly. And then the children, you know, they're all like kind of playing along. There's like uh, there's the boy of the boy of the the alcoholic kind of the alcoholic guy with a criminal past that was shown next to the old man earlier, so he he comes to play uh, a pivotal part and the other boys are making fun of him. They're also kind of scared of him and they don't want him to to play with them. And then uh, this, the, this new detective sees the ghost of the previous detective, Yamagawa. So he's startled by that. And he think, he's like scared that he's hallucinating. Oh, and he hears like a voice. And the old man is telling him, don't come back. You know, like he's telling every detective, that's part of how he got away with it. You know, he would like taunt and scare these detectives away and then he just, you know, picks and chooses who uh, who he kills, and then he he saves these relics of these people. Like you see, he's got the hat with the wings, so he saves these weird relics from the people he kills. And this this guy is like ner nerdy guy, and he's uh, studying and playing with planes. And uh, there's an eerie scene here where. He, the old man hovers in and just like ominously shows up, doesn't really present himself. And the little girl senses all this stuff. And that's another theme in uh, Otomo's work. And so, some kind of fans of his, his stories have assumed that the characters in Domu are in the same kind of world as the Akira characters, you know, because they have similar telepathic and psychological uh, powers. So they're investigating, there's this big dumb guy, and he, you know, all, all, all these main characters kind of converge. So the girl, you know, the, the kid with the bad parrot and the dumb guy are all like playing along, they're friends. And it's all cute, but it's you know you're you're watching it and um, and uh, you're well I don't know I mean there's weird stuff happening so you know some something's going to happen to these characters and this guy's investigating whether like if there's like actual ghosts so he's like consulting with some people and there's a, the guy's dad he's like an alcoholic and there's the old man just like appearing here. It, it's interesting how 
uh, he uses the the uh, different um, grayscale to indicate when there's like something eerie happening with the ghost, you know. So he changes the color there, and the boy just uh, kind of is left to watch cartoons where the dad dr drinks. And the little little girl, the old man is trying to get rid of her and to scare her. It looks like he might like threaten her like this, you know? Uh, he doesn't actually try to kill her because he's possessed basically by the old man. And I love like even this, like how it's like, you know, it's not straight on, it's like turned, like the world is like turning and these odd shots that are again, very cinematic. And then she's watching the exacto knife and he just like, you can see here, he's the old man's controlling it and he just splits open his neck and scares the crap out of this little girl. And he's still possessed, like the body's still possessed. And it's, I mean, this is a horror, <laughs> you know, this is horror, sci-fi horror. And then it's a freaking mess, you know, the cops are brought in. And I love this, how it's like, just, just shows the mess. And it's like technical drawing. So he's a great storyteller because he, he'll show you things, you know, like he doesn't skimp on the storytelling, you know, he'll draw the things that are like, maybe not that exciting. He doesn't think about those, you know, it doesn't seem like he thinks about like, oh, I prefer drawing people or, you know, I feel like he considers the story first and then just goes ahead and like tells you, you know, shows you the angles that you need to know to, to, to see the story that he wants to tell. So it's like empty and then everybody's filled, you know, like it just like filled the space, you know, but it's like opposite camera angle um, to the elevator. It, he sets you up where you're supposed to be, like you know where it is. And this is the mom trying to get the daughter and she's just in the hospital. This, and she's just kind of feverish because she saw some crazy stuff, you know. And she's just a little girl. Here it's, it doesn't give away like what's wrong with this guy yet. But he's kind of like, he's maybe he's watching through the eyes of the old man. And then uh, the old man is playing with this dumb guy. I think it's, he's making the ball float, you know, so the, the dumb guy is kind of fascinated with that. So you, you see the reaction here. Yeah, so here, here's where it comes. So that gun now is given to this uh, criminal guy. So he's trying to uh, control him. And he wants, I think he wants him to kill the, the girl. And this is what I was saying earlier, I guess this, this, that scene was a little later. So he's like in, uh, inquiring about, uh, about people with uh, like kind of ghost people, people that like channel like another world uh, experts in that field. Cause he's like, is it ghosts? You know, he's trying to figure that out, trying to find somebody legit. And he goes to one place and it's bogus, you know, like it's just like weird. Uh, sounds and stuff and uh, he, he doesn't really buy that you know it's like there's a family being helped they're doing weird yelling and things like that so he's just kind of watching and very skeptical and then the you know once they give him some weird potion and tell him to do some ridiculous thing he's like next <laughs> you know and uh, and then he finally gets to this other person and she's, she seems to be authentic, so he brings her in to kind of feel the energy at the buildings. And the old man and the little girl are in this like psychic battle. And then, you know, there's like crack in the window, which is like Akira. You see that a lot in Akira with, you know, the force of their, you know, psychic intellect will crack physical objects. So uh, she's brought in and she kind of like feels things, feels like what's going on. 
she's standing there and she's like, oh no, I gotta go. <laughs> so she wants nothing to do with it. So she's a real thing, like she's got powers, but she's like, no way, I see death everywhere. And then she gives him a warning, the children, you must watch out for the children. He doesn't know quite what that means, but in the end, you realize that she's she's not quite warning like it's hard to tell if she means like protect the children or like l look out because they got powers too you know and and it also Im implies that this old man is maybe a child that just got like wrinkly so there's kind of psychological implications maybe in Otomo's uh, you know th theory that like you know some people like we're essentially like children and then with some we age and but if we're like mean little children uh, that are obsessive with powers then we age you know our bodies age but our intellect remains the same as when we were children and that's kind of proven in this scene when like a grown-up shoots um, a kid you know so I think like I mean this is shocking you know he's like this kid is like walking he's picking up the ball and at night and uh, and he gets shot in the head and I mean great expression here is like covering his ear maybe from the shot but also maybe from the voices that are controlling him so I, I I'm guessing, you know, based on the storytelling, I haven't read every interview by Otomo, but like I said, it seems like he views the essence of people the same and their abilities like ageless. And children are just as wise and powerful intellectually as adults. And like, he probably sees him as a child in a way. Hence like, uh, that murder where it's like I mean it, it is also meant to be shocking so in one way you know he probably wants that to seem like wow you're this guy's killing children you know great crowd scene and the old man's coming around here also the shooter's father and the dumb guy I don't, they don't know about it, I don't think. And they're just messing around and, and the old man's behind him. And then boom, there's the father. And uh, he's trying to shoot the girl under the control of, of the old man, but she twists his arm and breaks it. And shockingly, he ends up shooting the dumb guy, a la One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest where there's like this big, the big Indian in that. And uh, she throws him like physically against the far wall and he's like, boom, falls, the gun falls, you know, like beautiful choice here of um, the composition. Almost like the camera's moving, like it, it caught him there and then it moved as the gun slides from his hand on the floor. So this is when things like really escalate. Love this picture right here. I thought this was such a beautiful choice. And then boom, the grandness of you know what they're actually doing. And they're running up and down the buildings. She's chasing the old man. They're like floating everywhere. This is a wonderful scene. Shattering windows behind them by the force. Love this. You know, you see the shadow. He's jumping. Each panel is like just phenomenal. And he was a young, uh, Otomo was very young uh, when he created this like mid to late 80, uh, 20s. So he was a, quite a prodigy. The father shoots the son in the chest. 
and he's he's dead like this is quite shocking like people just like this is serious consequences to all these um, actions here very shocking stuff you know like I'm sure that was a choice too like you know there's there's little that's sacred and maybe it's like it's Otomo showing that like you know if, if you're if you're not like this girl that has powers you're helpless you know and, and some some people in life are pawns you know they're either controlled or they're victims uh, this is interesting how other children gather so this is what like you know when that psychic said like look out for the children this is what she might have meant like some children are not pawns you know like some have different levels of power maybe even this dumb guy has some power because he won't die you know like he doesn't know how to use like psychic power but he's he's strong and here he shows it by smashing this <laughs> this guy's head into the wall over and over so like he's missing teeth and I mean oh. so yeah it's brutal the action here this is amazing like he's grabbing him by the foot you could feel the weight as he's like throwing him around flinging him around the camera angles are just perfect the the cops now lined up at the building they know something's going on inside boom this guy's thrown out the SWAT team is there they try to go in the, the, the guy that got thrown out is just a, one of these guys, uh, the SWAT team that wa went in, because that's the uniform. And then he drags this guy, the, the drunk, out and beat him up to smithereens. So uh, the, meanwhile, the, the girl and, and the old man are still fighting it off. After Otomo, we saw more and more of this kind of stuff, you know, in other manga. I think stories were never well, I wouldn't say never, but like stories uh, for the most part were n not as intelligent and, and well composed as the capabilities of Otomo. Uh, but a lot of the tropes that, w that set the precedent here in Domu were used again and are still being used in, in manga. Love this, you know, screen tone beautiful light behind that highlights the action that's going on on the roof you know beautiful choices like to you know to be in in the movements to cut from different players in the scene to show a far shot to show the reaction you know flames everywhere you know what the hell you know it's everything is hell and and then to go back into the scene so many cuts you know like boom boom everything's happening at once so amazing earlier they visited the old man's apartment uh, with the with the superintendent they unlocked the key while he was away and they found like a ring from one of the victims but the rest of the apartment was empty but now when they show up all his trinkets and toys that he's collected from his victims are spread out in the apartment so they're like okay this guy is it but i mean I don't, they still the police still don't know that he's got any capabilities but they've you know he, they just got those toys so they end up questioning him uh, later so he's having a hard time with this girl she's she's more powerful and the cops now are also trying to 
uh, subdue this guy and they keep uh, shooting him. Beautiful scene here. What I love about this is, I mean, all throughout, the way Otomo handles and considers cloth and the folds in the cloth, beautiful, the cufflings, everything gorgeous. But I love this scene because it like sh shows you that it's like, it's like a police drama, you know? So it's like a mix of genres. It's like horror and police drama with uh, psychological uh, people. And I forget what year Firestarter um, came to the US, but I'm not sure if this, it was earlier, because this is around like 1980 or so. Uh, but Firestarter was about like this little girl with psych psychological uh, powers to like move objects and things. So um, it's it's hard to tell. Well, I mean, uh, this Domu didn't make it out to the West for a while. This publication, I think, is like in 1990. Like the translation. So boom, like, you know, like basically <laughs> everything's blown up. What happened was like the old man decided to turn on the gas at uh, all these... Um, in all the apartments because they're like gas stoves and um, so the solution was I forget where it's shown here oh yeah the solution was the girl was uh, she shattered all the windows so then the gas wouldn't stay in so uh, it kind of foiled him for a while but it turned out that she missed some spots and this is what happens so he's like uh, happy about that <laughs> you know um, like you didn't get everything and uh, I, I created some damage. He's a trickster, you know, like um, it's like, um, you know, a trickster as a, like a, not Greek, but like as a type, character type. But he, he is very evil and he's, meant, he's uh, like Loki, you know, he's creating trouble. And you know, the, I mean, these buildings, they're destroying everything. And it's amazing because this, this has a prequel to what we see in Akira. Like Akira, it's like mass devastation. All of Tokyo is like, you know, practically wiped off the ground. And here we start to see some of that devastation. Oh, and this lady, I think she lost like a kid or something. And now she's like carrying the, like the dead body, body of the boy. More destruction. Oh, and then like they, they destroy this one building pretty much completely. And uh, the lady gets it in the head. So this guy is kind of like getting scared now. And this is amazing, like this is where he starts to lift his hand and then boom, she forces it like flat against the wall. And with her energy, like you can see his lip and spit like, you know, flapping and his coat flapping and she, she's like indenting him into the wall. I mean, that's like crazy stuff visually. And it's cool to see this because it's like it's almost like reminiscent of Will Eisner, some of these lines and the cartooniness of, of his expressions. But it's like very fine, like he used a very fine pen for all of this, which I'm sure was like, like uh, intentional, you know. Uh, he wasn't using brush. He wanted fine lines. He wanted like everything overworked and highly hyper detailed. Again, like beautiful shots and everything, great movement and everything. And then she's, you know, uh, this, this fireman is trying to rescue her, but she's like just so traumatized that she just blows him up, you know, his stomach and he falls in two. And, and the old man's freaking out, he's running away. Building's blowing up. He's asking for help as he's getting trampled by everybody. He's like, help, help him, you know, like, like he's helpless.
great expression here. Oh yeah, then this is uh, her reunited with her mom. Beautiful drawings of the cars. So now this is it and like the old guy's like scared. And then you see the destruction that they created here. And then uh, the investigation goes on, you know, and they're like trying to figure out like what happened. They brought the old man for questioning because he had all these uh, relics and you see the destruction again here. He had all these relics, so they brought him in. Uh, there's, a conf there's a conference and um, they're uh, saying that uh, that alcoholic guy that ended up getting the gun uh, at one point like worked on gas lines or something so then the uh, it's the media is running away with that information like are you saying he was involved with like blowing up the building too and they're like no we're not saying that we're just saying we found this connection you know so uh, and then so they got all the trinkets uh, laid out here the hat and um, and there's a little funny little story. It's like, because they're asking like, how did he, we didn't see the hat on him or anywhere. How did he get the hat? Because the, I think the kid wound up with the hat or something. Anyway, the point is um, somebody witnessed him after all the destruction and wreckage, the old man went to find the hat. He's like, I found it, my, my, I found my hat, my lucky hat. So, so they kind of connect the, the hat with him. Which, which implies, you know, he, like he must have had gotten the hat. Oh, he got the hat at, uh, from, from the guy that jumped, you know, so. So maybe he tampered with the body. Or he threw him over and kept the hat, you know, at that opening scene. So uh, they're saying that he's like basically got the mind of a child and uh, he can't be possibly guilty of anything. And then when he opens up, uh, when this detective opens up the door to talk to the old man, he sees like this vision of the previous detective that, detective that jumped, Yamagawa, and uh, he watches him jump. So he gets this visual. And then he also sees like the drunk uh, father. So he's shocked by these visuals. And uh, this old man, he's just playing with a truck. And now we're, uh, we're in the Denny Mall which is, again, a great staging. A oh, cool effect here. You must watch for the children. So he's like recalling that phrase, and this is where like it starts kind of coming in. So the old man gets uh, released. Yeah, so Otomo like sets up, you know, the introduction, the, the, the build up to the climax, which is the destruction of the buildings, and then the denouement, everything kind of resolving itself now beautifully, just like a film, you know, like American film writing. Yeah, the detective is just kind of like watching things. The old man is back to his usual thing, you know, just kind of hanging in the park. And then uh, it's been a few weeks and the girl uh, uh, apparently moved away with her mom. But now she reappears. She's back. And then boom, this is a very famous iconic image of, uh, from this book. Because the old man didn't expect her to come back. And she comes back and he's like scared shitless. And, uh, and she kind of like brings together the other kids, which we'll see in a moment. So she's, she's wanting to finish him off because um, he's dangerous and he's killing people and um, she believes that's wrong 
you know, she's a, she's a young child, but she knows that's wrong. And um, he tries to fight her off, and he's, he's scared because she's more powerful. Good prevails over evil. And the children kind of gather here. And the detective witnesses this. Yeah, this is where the children kind of like start to pay attention a little. And they all appear and s surround him. The, the, the powerful children, which I guess there's like uh, only four. And he, he has a stroke and uh, passes away. And the kids run off and play. And this is uh, the final scene. And life resumes and happiness re remains among the young happy children. So this, this is Domu, a child's dream. Uh, there's a lot to be analyzed there about, you know, why it's like a, a child's dream. A child's dream may be to live in peace and harmony without violence, you know, and uh, the, the children that have any power should get together and uh, fight evil. I think there was probably like hippie elements to Otomo's view of life in a lot of ways because he grew up in like there were protests even in Japan I believe during the 60s so um, so I, I, he was uh, very much into that and he wrote uh, a sci-fi book earlier that was called Fireball which he didn't finish it was going to be a longer work like this and uh, that ha had some um, protests and things like that I believe so anyway, this is it. Domu, uh, highly, highly recommended. Hope you enjoyed uh, going through it. And, you know, it definitely re deserves a reread because there, there's so much visually going on. It, it's an absolute masterpiece. You know, Akira is like a gigantic masterpiece, but this is uh, a more consumable-sized masterpiece under uh, 200 pages, I believe. So, thank you.